in a seated position to ground and center. It's always a really helpful thing to do just in general in life to take a moment to pause, to drop into that stillness within and to connect with the breath because sometimes throughout the whole day, we actually don't take any time to connect with the breath. And it's really important when we stretch because when we're stretching, we want to be aware the length of the inhale to create the space in the body and then to feel that deepening of the exhale, that dropping in and then finding a little more depth. And you can do that just by first connecting with the breath. And then as you move through the different stretches that we're going to do today, then you're going to be able to really see how the breath does allow for depth. So placing your hands down onto your knees, onto your thighs, you're welcome to take your thumb and your index finger to touch and have your hands in mudra if you prefer. And then just let your shoulders fall down away from your ears. Think about lengthening the neck, drawing up through the crown of the head, bringing the shoulder blades towards each other, drawing the navel in towards the spine. Allowing the breath to be even and steady. Feeling a softening in the muscles of the face. Noticing that expansion. Noticing how as you inhale, The breath fills the cavity, the, the chest cavity, and even moves into the back body and the side body. And then as you exhale, just notice that drawing in and that feeling again in the side body as well. Now, for five more breaths, inhaling deeply. Feeling the expansion of the breath, exhaling slowly and completely. Inhale deeply. Exhale slowly and completely. Again. There's a mantra that resonates for you that you would like to repeat as you do this. And feel free to maybe it's even repeating to yourself that you are whole, that you are healthy, and that you are safe. And when you come to the next one, bring your hands together at your heart to honor yourself, to acknowledge yourself for taking the time to be here and setting this time aside. Now, I just see that there's someone who's just come in so let me admit them in, and then we'll actually begin to move into the stretches. So just give me one moment. So now from this position, I'd like you just to bring your hands beside you and cross your ankles. We're going to take the right hand to the right knee, the left hand to the foot, and just Hearing that feedback. And now from here, see how you can your foot and bringing it into the inner crease of your arm and wrapping your arm around and then rocking from side to side. Let's see how that feels. Okay, now from here, take your hand to your foot, put the leg in front of you, 
going to draw back at the hip crease. Now, as you're doing this, what I'd like you to be aware of is, as you're drawing back and you're leading forward from the heart, this is that, again, the expansion of the breath. So the inhale, you're expanding out, and then the exhale is just a softening. The next inhale is a little more length and then a softening. And the next breath, a little more and a softening. And you're just progressively, with each inhale, going a little further forward, and then exhale, softening. Inhale, going forward, and then exhale, softening. Now you want to try and keep as much length in your spine for as long as you can. So draw back as much as you can from the hip crease as you're leading forward from the heart. And then you can take your hand either to your foot, you can take your hand to your wrist if you feel that that's accessible to you and start to fold in. But if your hamstrings are quite tight, instead have a bend in your knee and think as you're folding here, you're going to inhale, find length, and then exhale, soften. And then the next breath, the inhale again is bringing you a little further forward. And then the exhale, softening. And you're going to progressively do that instead. So I want you to keep your torso and your thigh connected rather than having the leg straight and trying to round in this way to get to your foot. Because when we do this, we bring it into the back instead of the hamstrings. And we want to focus on with the hamstrings. So just stay here for two more breaths, inhaling, finding a little more length. And then exhale, soften the knee. Again, inhale, find a little more length. And exhale, soften. And your next inhale, you're going to come back up. Take now the left leg out. Bring your foot in towards you. And now bend your knee and the same thing. So just first rocking from side to side. This is known as cradle the baby in Hatha Yoga. And it's just a great way to increase mobility in the hip. And then if you feel comfortable, you can take your foot into the inner crease and you can just start to rock from side to side. But again, if that doesn't feel comfortable for you, just take your hand to your foot. Okay, now we're going to again bring the leg out. Same thing. So we want to draw back from the hip crease, lead from the heart, start to go a little further forward and then relax into that place. The next breath again is expansive. So as we expand forward, then we're going to soften into that place. Expand forward, soften into that place. And we're going to keep moving again with the breath, finding first the expansion, the extension, and then the softening through the depth. One more deep inhale, long exhale, and then slowly bring yourself back up. Okay, now you're going to take your leg out and we're going to come down onto our back. Now, once you come onto your back, just bring your left foot onto the mat, take your right ankle. We're going to get back into the hips here. So, interlace your fingers behind your thigh. Draw your thigh towards you and use your elbow to guide your knee away. And the further the thigh comes towards and the further the knee moves away, the deeper the stretch is into the outer hip here. So you really want to navigate in your own body. Where is that where you're feeling sensation? You feel the stretch, but it's not too intense. Now release your hands. Walk your foot over to the left. Let your knees fall to the right. And now with your hip, see about bringing your hip and your knee into one line. And imagine you have strings and the strings are going to pull forward. And as the strings are pulling forward, you're going to now get a stretch here for your quad. So for cycling or hiking, this is a great stretch. So keep the hips again drawn forward. Hands can just be on your chest. And once more, even though you're not finding the extension as you did when you were in your forward fold, try to still use the breath as a way to deepen into the stretch. So the inhale again is going to be expansive. And the exhale is a softening, a surrender, a relaxation. And just stay here with, again, the breath. Good. 
And now release, walk your foot. Bring your foot down, bring both of your knees in towards your chest, just hug in tight. And now we're gonna come into a gentle spinal twist. So bring your arms into cactus, let your knees fall over to the right. Two breaths here. And then come over into the other side. So I'm just gonna switch that up. I don't know what's come up on my phone. So now just bring your knees over in the other direction. Two breaths here. This is just a very gentle spinal twist. So keep the shoulders rooted down. And then come back to center. And now we're going to do the same on the other side. So taking the opposite ankle, interlace the fingers, bring the thigh towards Use your elbow to guide your knee a little further away. Keep bringing the thigh closer to you. Notice if on one side you feel that it's a little more open the hip than the other, and how much more open? Can you bring your thigh closer even more, or does it feel the opposite and you need to bring it further away and the knee closer to you? Now release, bring both of your knees now over in the other direction, walk your foot, and then think about having your knee and your hip in one line. So guiding again, the hips forward, just keep your hands right over your chest, let your shoulders relax, stay with the breath. Keep drawing the hips slightly up. With your knee, try to draw the knee down. Now, if you have a sensitive knee, you can lift your knee slightly up away from the floor, but try to draw the hips forward. And now bring yourself back to center. Guide again the knees in towards the chest. And now release your left leg. You're going to interlace your fingers behind your right thigh. Bring your leg up. Now, as you bring your leg up, you can remain here, or you can start to walk your hands a little further up your leg. If you prefer to have a bend in your knee, that's fine. Just keep bringing your thigh closer towards your chest. If you have a little more length in the hamstrings, you can start to push out through the heel, walk your foot even further up, or take your hand to the edge of your foot and guide your leg closer to you. And just breathe here, bring the leg closer and closer. And just stay with it. Okay, now you're gonna bend your knee. So you're here in a half happy baby. Now from your half happy baby though, you're going to push out through the right heel. Now it might just be a little bit. You might keep your knee bent and that's fine. Or you might push out completely straightening the leg. Breathe in here. And now bend your knee, release your hand, cross your knee over, keep your right shoulder rooted, keep drawing your right knee closer towards the mat. Again, you're going to get a nice spinal twist here. And then come back to center, hug your knee in, and exhale, release. Same thing now, other side. So bring the knee in towards the chest. Interlace the fingers. Bring the leg up. Knee can stay bent. So don't hesitate to have the bend in the knee. Think again with the torso and the thigh, getting closer towards each other rather than the leg being straight and the torso further away. Then from here again, you're going to walk your hands up your leg. Maybe push out through the heel and the leg is straight. Or again, you bring your hands 
closer towards the edge of your feet or two. And then just keep bringing the leg towards you. You can point your right toes or you can keep your right foot flexed. And then bend your knee. And then from here, same thing. We're gonna either just push out a little bit, bringing the knee out to the side, or you're gonna push out completely through the heel, straightening the left leg and breathing here. Keep bringing your foot a little further up towards your shoulder, especially if your foot you have your foot flexed and your leg is straight. See if you can get a bit of a deeper stretch by bringing the foot upwards. Great, now bend the knee, come back to center, hug your knee in towards your chest and release. Now you're gonna bring your feet onto the mat, rock yourself up. And now once you rock yourself up, bring your legs out to the side slightly. Now with your legs out to the side, you're gonna flex your feet and it may be here. Otherwise, you can start to push out the heels a little more and draw the heart forward. Now, as you're doing this, what I'd like you to be aware of, though, is not rounding the back to come down towards the ground. The same idea, think here, you're going to lead forward with the heart. You're going to draw back at the hip crease. Now, you might stay here. You might push the heels a little further. Maybe you breathe into the stretch there, and that's enough. Or you keep going further and further. Now, you can stay upright. You can even use your hands here and bring them behind you. And that way you're still gonna feel a deep stretch, but stay upright. Otherwise you can start to walk your hands further and further and bring your torso closer towards the ground. What I really want you to notice though is with the stretch in the legs, not bringing it into the back this way, because you can bring your hands down, you can come onto your forearms, you can even come down onto your torso with the back rounded. But what we want to do instead is we want to find the length in the spine as we're coming down and breathing here. So try to think more of the length rather than the depth in this and use the breath for the depth. So if this was the case in the seated, the inhale is the length forward and then the exhale is just the softening. And then the next inhale again is a little more length and then softening. And then next, a little more length, and the softening. Just so you don't feel this need, much like getting to your toes, of getting to the floor. Just where is that where you're feeling the stretch in the legs? You can soften into the sensation of the stretch and then breathe deeper into it. And we'll be here for two more breaths. So just stay with it. Inhaling deeply. And exhaling slowly and completely. Doing great. One more deep inhale and exhale. And then from here, use the inhale to bring yourself back up. Bring your feet in towards each other. And now we're going to come into Baddha Konasana. Now for this Baddha Konasana, because we already have just now been into the inner leg, I want you to scoot your bottom slightly back so you have more of a diamond shape between the legs. And now we're going to intentionally get into the mid-back. So take your hands by your feet and feel almost as though your navel is being drawn in towards your spine so that you have this rounding of the back. And just let your head relax. You can bring your shoulder blades away from each other and breathe here. And if you feel you can go further into this, you can. You can let your forehead even come to your feet. But try to still keep a little bit of that rounding here into the back, even if you come all the way down. So rather than a flat, again, keep a bit of the rounding. Great, we'll do one more breath. And then slowly again, bring yourself up. Now I want you to bring your left leg out. You're gonna cross your right leg over. We're gonna get back into the hip here. So again, think about pulling back and then leading forward. Keep your foot flexed and then just go a little further forward and a little further and a little further. And then see again about where you can soften into this. It's fine, there's gonna be a certain point 
as you start to drape over your knee where there will be the rounding in the back. We just don't want to make that our starting point. So as you're here again, think pulling forward with the heart, letting the face relax, the shoulders relax, and then just softening into it. One more deep inhale, long exhale. Okay, and then come up. We're gonna bring the heel towards, and as you bring your heel towards, we'll come now into cow face pose so we can get a stretch for the arms. So bring the right arm up, bring the right hand down, bring either. And I'm just gonna come this way so you can see. As you're here, it's either gonna be bringing the hand to the low back or Bring the elbow by the side body or bring the fingers towards each other. Now, as you bring your hands towards each other, try to create this clasp because it's this clasp that's going to allow for that lengthening in the spine. And sometimes when the shoulder is tight, that initial clasp can feel the most challenging. But once the hands come together to touch, you're going to feel a lot more comfortable in the pose. So staying upright, breathing here. One more inhale and exhale. Okay, and then just release, draw your right arm underneath, hug in tight. Good, and then bring your hands beside you. And now we'll just simply do the same thing on the other side. So taking the right leg, draw the left leg over. Again, try to feel this Drawing back and then leading forward. Drawing back and leading forward. Drawing back and leading forward. And then seeing as much length in the spine as possible. And if you find that you notice that this keeps happening, this rounding in the back, you can again use your hands and start to do this instead. So that you focus on this drawing forward from the heart. You're gonna notice it increases the stretch. So if you round the back, even if you get to your toes, there's not going to be the same stretch as if you lead forward with the heart. And make sure as well that your foot is flexed. Try to imagine if your foot was pressed up against a wall rather than the foot being loose, because that also will take the engagement out of the muscles, which won't allow for, again, as much of a stretch. And then just breathe in here. So inhale again. And then exhale, soften into it. And then next, inhale, coming a little further forward. And then softening into that. And you're just going to progressively move that way. Inhaling and exhaling. <laughs> and then inhaling, exhaling. And one more breath. Okay, use your inhale to bring yourself back up. Again, now you're just going to take your foot, draw it behind you. Take now the left arm, bring your arm up, bring your fingers again towards each other to touch. Do not concern yourself if your hands don't touch. Try to again avoid this tendency of rounding the back, the upper back, and then trying to grasp for the hands this way. Clasping, yes, but grasping we want to move away from. So keep lifted up through again the crown of the head, draw down through the tailbone. So think of keeping your tailbone just ever so slightly tucked. Great, stay with it. One more deep inhale and a long exhale and release. And again, just draw your arm underneath and hug it. Okay, now from here, bring your hands beside you. Come over onto your knees. We're going to take our knees wide and come into saddle pose. So here's another great stretch for the quads. So when you're here, let your heels fall away from each other. And you might find that this feels preferable for you. Bring the hips forward, being on your fingertips, drawing the shoulder blades towards each other. So as the pelvis lifts and you get that engagement of the hips, then you're still getting the stretch for the quads but you may find that you could come down comfortably onto your palms. 
or you may find that you can let your buttocks rest into the soles of the feet. Now, if they do though, watch for this rolling inwards of the thighs. We wanna keep the thighs drawn away from each other. That's when you're gonna have the engagement. Then you could be here and you could just play with bending the elbows to get a little closer to the floor, or you could come down onto your forearms. The same applies. You need to draw the hips upwards to keep the engagement of the quads, continue to draw them outwards away from each other, and then see about coming down onto your back, then see about taking opposite hand to opposite elbow and breathing here. And just stay with it. Let the breath be really nice and even. And steady. And two more breaths. Just keep that engagement, whether you're in your fingertips, whether in your palms, your forearms, or all the way down. One last breath. And then slowly bring yourself back up. Bring your knees in towards each other. Take your hands, draw your right leg back, rock forward and back. Great, and then bring the knee down. Same thing, other side, rocking forward and back. And then bring your knee down, keep both of your toes tucked and start to walk your hands towards your knees. Now you might find that this is quite uncomfortable of uh, having this stretch for your toes. So if that's the case for you, you can always lift your buttocks up away. The further the buttocks are away from the heels, the less intense this will be. The closer they are, of course the opposite, the more intense. And I want you to just sit with this for four breaths. So take a deep inhale and a long exhale. And another deep inhale. And a long exhale. And just continue this way. Last one. From here, you're gonna come up, bring your hands in front of you, and just take the top of your feet and ever so gently hit the top of your feet onto you, your mat, your floor. And now we're gonna take our fingers and we're just gonna to start to rotate. So this is just a little stretch for your wrists here. So from here, start to bring your hips towards your heels. Now as you're doing this, you're gonna notice that the heels of the hands are gonna to wanna to pull away from the mat. So what we wanna do is keep the heels of the hands down as we're bringing the hips towards the heels. And then just stay again with this. Then inhale deeply, draw the heels of your hands closer towards your mat. And then just soften. And again, take a deep inhale. And soften. And last two breaths. And then come slightly forward, release your hands, and then just shake your wrists, let that go. And then come back to your seated position. So we're back where we started from. We're gonna just let the shoulders relax. Draw up through the crown of the head, bring the shoulder blades in towards each other, draw the navel in towards the spine. Take a deep inhale through your nose. And a long exhale out your mouth. And then bringing your hands together at your heart center. Just take a moment now to think of an area of your life that maybe you could let yourself just stretch a little more. So sometimes we hold back from stretching further into areas of our life that would allow us for more expression or more growth or more life experience. We can start to move there. We feel a little bit of discomfort and the same happens in the physical body. We move into those areas that are tight 
there there's a little bit of resistance and we feel a bit of discomfort. It's important to come back to the breath in those moments in life when we want to stretch and of course in the physical body when we want to stretch. Allow yourself to feel sensation and then use the exhale to soften and deepen into it so that the next opportunity for stretching or the growth in your life, you can do so from a place of greater ease and you can continue on that way. The light within me honors the light within each of you. Thank you so much for being here.